Hello and welcome back to the basement. In this episode, the Talman base is back in the shop, and this time, we are going to make a custom pit guard to replace this nonsense. All right, so this base is actually turning into a bigger project than I originally anticipated. I wanted this to, as a project base to do things with and basically recreate some of the same steps that I did with the Fender Jazz Bass that I restored. Um, well, I wouldn't say restored, uh, salvaged, let's say. But I've always wanted to make my own pit guard. I've never really tried to. Um, so I think this is a good opportunity to do that because number one, I can't find one cheaper than I can make one. Um, there really isn't a whole lot of options for this particular base unless I wanted to get the exact same one that's on here right now, which is this tortoise pit guard and uh, red tortoise pit guard. Problem with this is, is the top layer of this uh, two ply pit guard is kind of falling apart. So it is white black underneath it, which I'll probably save just to keep it on hand. Certainly gonna use it as the template. So what I did is I got this big sheet of blank, and this is black, white, black three ply pit guard material. Um, this cheap stuff off of Amazon. And then also, while I've got the pit guard off, I went ahead and got myself a big fat roll of copper foil shielding tape because the uh, whatever paint is used on the inside of this base, well, it's not conductive. Um, or at least if it is, my meter is not picking it up. So I'm just gonna do, go ahead and do that while I've got the, the pit guard off. It just seems like it makes sense. So first step is gonna be take this pit guard off. I've got a sheet of, um, I don't know, three eighths inch, actually probably, yeah, it's probably five eighths um, MDF. I'll make a giant fat template for this uh, pit guard out of that, and we'll use that to cut the new one. So let's get after it. Before I make um, a pit guard, I want to try, you know, before I take it to this three ply black, white, black pit guard material, I'm going to take it to this um, quarter inch thick oak plywood and do a test run on that first. Make sure that I've got the process down pat before I wreck the more expensive pit guard material. So let's get, yeah, let's get after that. Yes, I finally got myself a new bandsaw. This is my, I don't want to say pride and joy, but it kind of is. So, like I said, I just made a resaw fence out of some reclaimed pallet wood, and I took the fence off of my old jointer planer before I sent it back to Jet to get worked on. And, well, I don't have that back yet, so I just put it on here for right now and made, uh, made these adjustable rails that bolt to the table and then made it slot in here so that this kind of moves back and forth. So I've tested it out. It took some nice thin quarter inch thick pieces off of this uh, kind of burl oak firewood. So I was thinking about making a pit guard out of that, but um, I, yeah, I, I just, I, I want to keep it simple. And I think the whole purpose of this, if I'm gonna go ahead and make a pit guard, I want it to match that black headstock. So that's why I'm going with the three ply black, white, black. So anyway, enough about this. What I wanna do is just cut this to length on the saw and see if I can't use my fence for that, which I think I can. Yes, I could use my table saw, but I got a new band saw and I just made this fence. So let's use it. This I picked up literally the same day that I bought the uh, Talman base. Both were Facebook Marketplace purchases. I scored this. Uh, I really wasn't even looking for this. It just kind of popped up on my feed. And I ended up buying it just because it was in decent shape. And I figured it would be great for doing things just like this. I think this will be way better at cutting out this uh, this pit guard than some of the other options, like a jigsaw or something like that. Now you could use a jigsaw, obviously you could use a coping saw, whatever you got, uh, you know, small band saw. But this is what I've got, 
and I don't have to change the blade, I don't think, and this is gonna be fine, so I'm gonna get after it with this. Okay, so it's the next evening. I've got my pick guard template kind of roughed out on the scroll saw. I've got it labeled so I know which base this goes for in case I ever need to make more. I've got my uh, volume and blend pot hole marked as well as all the pick guard holes marked as well. I've also traced out this piece of uh, three ply oak plywood. I think it's uh, oak and poplar or just all oak. I don't know. But anyway, that's going to be my test piece. But first, I've got to clean this up. So let me do that.
All right, well, that was fun and educational for me. Let's see how this test pattern went. So obviously it was not without its share of mistakes. I'm not all that great with a router, obviously. I haven't really fine tuned this test. This is pretty, pretty daggone close. not too bad that actually kind of looks cool okay so I'm not actually necessarily opposed to a plywood pick guard I think it would be unique and kind of cool um, yeah let me see what I can do to clean this one up I'm still gonna make the black the black three ply one um, but to do this properly using this big template number one I need to have a different router bit with, uh, I, I do have a straight cut template bearing bit, but the bearing is on the top. I need a bottom bearing uh, straight bit in order to utilize this to go all the way around the perimeter of a closely cut pit guard is what I learned. And then go back and then switch to the 45 degree bevel. So anyway, this is pretty close. I like this. I'm probably not going to use it because I have a black one on the brain, but if you have an Ibanez Talman base and want this, let me know. Just might send it to you. Um, I'm going to clean it up, get it to fit a little bit better. Um, I will countersink the screw holes and probably put some wipe on poly on it for you if you want it. I'm probably going to do all that just to see what this thing looks like because I think it's going to look kind of cool. I mean, honestly, if if naphtha shows us anything about grain popping, let me show you what this could look like. I mean, that's with no sanding. That's kind of cool. I can get down on something like that. So, yeah, I didn't sand anything on the top, just the, just those bevels. But anyway, I am going to clean this up and probably give it away to somebody who really wants it because I can make an, I can make more of these. Okay, so it's the next evening. I did off camera fit this wood pit guard on. I put a light coat of uh, just paste wax on it just to see what the color would do if I were just to put a, just a light oil finish on it. I actually like it. Um, however, I never did intend this to be the look for the guitar. That, and again, this was a test piece, so I wasn't really trying to be particularly, shall we say, careful with it. <laughs> I was just trying to do a proof of concept before I took it to plastic. So I am going to take this one off. It's pretty cool. Um, I do like it. Um, it's not the look that I'm going for with this particular instrument. And again, you know, it's, it's got some got some mistakes. If you like this and you want it, drop me a comment. And the first one to give me, you know, to say they want it, I will send it to you. Just uh, we'll figure out what the postage costs. And as long as I break even, you can have it. So no big deal there. Um, I am going to try and make another one just like it. So I'll actually have two. Um, again, it's just for testing purposes because I would rather mess up this plywood than this pit guard material. So I want to do one more because I want to change my methodology. What I originally intended to do was to make this template so that I could use a pattern bit. Um, I didn't think about the pattern bits that I actually have or didn't have. So I needed to, obviously with the bevel, I've got the right bit for that one with a bottom bearing. I didn't have a flush trim bit with a bottom bearing. So I went out and got one today. It's way oversized, but the idea is that I'll be able to use this on bodies eventually um, for at least half at a time is the idea. But anyway, I'm gonna try doing this again with this pattern bit and hopefully, um, hopefully I don't have to take it to the jigsaw, or not jigsaw, but the, uh, <laughs> I'm not used to having a scroll saw. Hopefully I won't have to take it to the scroll saw to, you know, cut it out. But anyway, I am going to whip another one of these out real quick. I'm gonna just cut to the part where I'm using the pattern bit. 
Okay, the thought is I'm going to use the two-sided tape, stick it to this piece of MDF, clamp the MDF to the bench, and the two-sided tape should stick better to this MDF versus the workbench, which has Danish oil and paste wax and all kinds of crap on it. Nice. Not too happy with this neck gap, but it's not really that noticeable. I think the other one was tighter for some reason. Was it? Huh. It sure was tighter. Weird. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder what the difference was in the process. I don't think I shaped this one by hand that much. Hmm. All right, just have to be careful of that. Anyway, I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope I don't screw this up. I should be able to, should be able to get two attempts out of this. Oh yeah, I'll be able to get two attempts out of this. So hopefully I can nail it the first try now that I've done two practice runs. on I think that's the right call color wise that headstock all right I'm gonna remake this tomorrow all right so it's the next day I'm going to remake this pit guard in the meantime what I've done is I've fixed the neck pocket I've got some 
cedar veneers that I took out of a, I, I, I enjoy cigars, so I you know keep cigar boxes and they usually come with some cedar veneers. So I've been saving them for just such an occasion. So that is now fixed. I also kind of cleaned that out a little bit too so that it would fit better. So now what I need to do is I'm gonna take all my pattern bits from my router and I'm gonna red Loctite those screws that hold the bearings in place. Okay. All right, so now that my pattern and my bits are taken care of, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna at least get up to the point where I'm routing the 45 degree bevel and I'll be right back. Definitely not perfect, but it's better than this one that was peeling apart. So, yeah. But anyway, this was a great experience. Um, had fun learning how to attempt to do a pit guard. It didn't turn out perfect, but it didn't turn out awful either. Definitely some issues, some opportunities with it, but I think it'll do better next time, or I'll do better next time. Definitely gotta get the template perfect. Okay, I'm back. It is the next evening. I've got the pit guard pretty much dialed in. I actually took it out to church and gigged it this morning, and it did okay. It really did. Um, 
My concern is the electronics. They're still a bit noisy for my tastes. So I'm thinking I'm gonna switch this over to a passive system uh, using something similar to like a, um, a 62 custom shop, uh, like a flea jazz bass, where it's got the stacked uh, volume, tone, volume, tone for each pickup. I think that would be kind of cool, but I'm not done with the pick guard yet. So one of the things I wanted to do, um, I'm very much inspired <laughs> Uh, by the playing of Getty Lee, and I like his uh, pick guard that he's been using for uh, one of his, you know, his 72 jazz bass uh, on tour, where he's got a logo engraved into the pick guard material. So his is a pearl white, and it goes down to the black. This is black, and there's a white center layer. So I want to do my basement logo, probably right about here on the pick guard, uh, in a similar position where like a toggle switch would be on like a Mustang bass. But I'm thinking I want to try that. So before I take it to the pit guard, I am going to try it on one of the scraps from the pit guard and see what I can come up with. I'm going to use a Dremel with a miniature engraving ball burr bit and uh, see what I can come up with. I think the biggest thing is, can I have a steady hand and can I get the depth right? So to help me with that, I've had this router attachment forever. Um, this is actually how I did the pearl block inlays on the Fender Jazz Bass. Uh, along with a chisel. So I'm going to set this thing up off camera. This thing is way dusty. I, haven't, I don't think I've used it since that project actually. So it's been years since I've used that. But I think it's going to be the right tool for this particular job. So I'm going to set it up and we'll, uh, we'll get to proof of concept on this scrap here in just a second. All right, so I've got the Dremel tool in the router attachment. And what I'm going to do is I am going to tape this down in the middle of here. I want these things off to the side just so I can have um, support for the router base on all four sides. I'll probably do something similar um, when I go to do the actual pick guard. All right, I'm gonna give this another go, potentially at what I'm thinking full scale would be. All right, I'm back, it's the next evening. I've got the base on the table, which means you know I'm gonna go ahead and do this engraving onto the pit guard. So I just cut out the uh, sample one that I did last night, the test piece. So I cut it out as a circle and I slapped it on here with some uh, two-sided tape just to mock it up and see if I like it. So I put this in front of my desk where I've been working all day and uh, looking over at it every so often and I'm convinced. I think it's gonna look pretty cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it even though I know I'm not gonna attain perfection. It's a pick guard. <laughs> and I'm practicing and I'm learning. So obviously with the engraving, um, you know, I know it's not going to be perfect. There's gonna be some, obviously some lessons learned. Obviously if I was trying to do super duper precision work, I would probably contract this out to somebody with a CNC mill or laser engraver kind of thing. But um, as it stands right now, this is, you know, what can, what can I do in my basement with the tools that I have and make it look somewhat cool. So I'm gonna go ahead and chance it. I'm going to, again, I'm going to draw this out freehand like I did yesterday and kind of hope for the best, cross my fingers. So the big part that I'm concerned about with this is scratching it up. So I'm going to try and mask off the areas that I'm not going to be hitting um, with the router as much as I possibly can to protect it from the base plate of the router from scratching it. So let's get after it. Let's take this pit guard off one more time. Thank you. 
So it does occur to me while I'm getting prepared to do this that I could actually cut all the way through the pit guard and have it um, go through to the paint because the paint will show through uh, in the same spot and essentially have the same, exact same effect. So that is an option if I booger this up. Though I think if I booger this up, I'm just going to have to start over and make a new pit guard. So hopefully that won't be the case. I'm going to take the chance and let the chips fly where they may. Okay, well there is the custom engraving on the pit guard. It's not perfect, but I think it looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna, I'll take it. So for the most part, I think it uh, turned out okay. It was definitely, definitely nerve wracking, but I don't think I wrecked the pit guard. So that's the good news. So I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this video right here. This has been a very, very interesting project trying to make my very first uh, plastic pick guard. I definitely want to do some more in wood, but I want to use some actual better quality wood that's the right thickness, um, like 3 16 something like that, rather than quarter inch thick, because it, uh, it was a little tall. Um, but anyway, next episode on this base, I am going to put pearl block inlays on the fretboard, real mother of pearl block inlays without removing the frets. So join me for that video coming up very, very soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time down here in the basement.